It wants to corrupt your harvest. It wants to interrupt your, your momentum. You got to understand these things come. And we need to understand it in our hearts. That it, this, these things are uh, assigned to interrupt us and corrupt us. All right? Okay. All right. So, we spent too much time. I, I, this is where I stopped. Y'all let me get away with this one. Your destiny is greater than your present purpose. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm going is greater than what I have now. What you see is not all of me. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Still under management. Still under construction. God still, the verdict is not out. <laughs> okay, number two. But they got to do it enter his rest. When you record, that's when you enter his rest. When you, when you, see, most of us haven't been baptized with his purpose. That's why we meander and roam spiritually. We have no significance. We ain't trying to do nothing. We just trying to hold on to everything. No, 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 no. That ain't rest. God wants us to have a meek and quiet spirit. He want peace to be in our borders. He want our, you get what I'm saying? These belong to us. Number two. Verse 11. Let's go to verse 11 real quick. I was going to read 8 through 11, but I ain't got time. Because I got some stuff in here that I got to get out. Oh, yeah. 4 and 11. It says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into what? That rest. The rest I just talked about. When you can identify your purpose. When you make up in your mind that I don't, that there's nothing else. I don't want to waste my life on things that don't value. I don't, mm. I'm not trivial. I'm not petty. I'm not mm. dramatic. Mm. Uh, amen. When you begin to get seasoned in your, your, your conjecture and your presentation of what God has called you to be. He said, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So the example that they had, they had great demonstration of God. Am I right? Not only did they have demonstration of being delivered from Egypt, but they had demonstrations and manifestations of God's goodness in, in the wilderness. And they still gripe. They still complain. So folks, say, if I can see the power of God like they saw in the first century church, uh, I'll be sold out. You lying. <laughs> because it's by faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. So it's not necessarily by what I see. Right. Yes, I don't have to have an earnest, a down payment, although we do. But I don't have to have anything that my senses have to recognize as God. That's what faith is. If I see it, I believe it. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That's why God, Jesus had to correct Thomas. Because Thomas wanted to touch him. Which, is a, that's a bi-level look, though. It's really, uh, I, kind of correcting him, but at the same time, you got to give credit to Thomas Didymus. That's his name. He's twin. You got to give, you got to give uh, credit to Thomas because he wanted to handle the word of life, yeah. and that is our portion. But it wasn't yet time for the manifestation for him to handle it. Yeah, he said, "Blessed our eyes who hadn't seen and yet believe." Huh? Because people, how many know people do certain things? Because they ex have expectations. But when the expectations don't come to pass, I mean, you know, we get disgusted and casted to the side. Y'all you know what I'm telling you. Most of church has been taught, uh, if I ain't got it, I can't believe it. If I ain't got it, it must not be true. Come on, y'all. Most of us, that's what they told us. It's, it's a conveyor belt of hope. They put a conveyor, a, a, conveyor, a conveyor belt in the church and said, all you got to do is stand in line and it's going to come to you. <laughs> that's what they told us but they didn't tell us it's the testimony that stands sure is you understand it in spite, of, in spite of I'm not necessarily having it the sum total of what I thought I have enough of earnest in my heart to believe that when he started it he's going to complete it again today that's how you not enter into unbelief that's how you labor to enter into the rest that's the rest that God has for us Amen. Amen. Uh, let me let me read it in the Passion so I can go to the verse number three. But listen to this in the Passion. I like the Passion translation. I got a few translations I get into. Um, yeah. Uh, it says in verse eight, and we're going to start at eight, and then we're going to go to 11. It says, now if this promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua, because you, verse eight, it says Jesus, but it really intended to be Joshua because Joshua and Jesus were interchangeable, brought the people into the land. God wouldn't have spoken later of another rest yet to come. So the rest that Joshua offered, 
there was another rest to come. Okay. So we conclude, we conclude that there is still a full and complete rest waiting for the believers to experience. That's why the Bible says in certain places in the same, uh, with that chapter 11, they without us. Remember that statement? They're not complete. Too. So that was that rest. So we're, 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 we're taking off or we're starting. Their end became our beginning. That's the full rest. Verse 10. As we enter into God's faith, rest life, we cease from our own works just as God celebrated his finished works and rest in them. Verse 11. This is the verse. So then we must give our all. Somebody tell you they will give our all. Give our all. Yep, this, this rest is not on blue light sale. This rest is not bargain basement. You can't. <laughs> and this is not a table of negotiation. You know, this is not a, a, a deal. You know, you got to what? You got to give your all. And be eager to experience this faith, this rest life, they call it. That's what the passion says. So that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. So there's a rest that God wants to give us. Tell us, tell you never, He wants you to rest from your labors. Yeah. That's why we got to learn of him. See, when you learn of him, you learn of his heart, his goal, his objective. Until you are, have a good understanding of what his expectations for you, you'll never enter to rest. Yeah, yeah. See, we, we treat it like, it's a, like we co, it's a cohabitation agreement. It ain't a cohabitation. It ain't you and him. You know, I know faith movement didn't tell us that. They, they, they basically let you keep who you are and still get stuff. So in the midst of that type of faith, you didn't have to lose anything. You add. So we was always trying to add, divide, multiply. No, 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 no. It never was about us. It's always been about him. Number three. I'm rolling. Verse 14, same chapter. Let's go to 14. Then I'm going to read it in the past, and then we're going to go to verse 4. I mean the fourth four point. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Who, who is a great high priest? Jesus. Oh, I thought you were going to say Aaron. Don't you say <laughs> That is passed to the heavens. Oh, there you go. Jesus, the Son of God, let us, right, do what? Hold fast our profession. Now, of course, the English word for profession would mean your job. <laughs> it's not that's what I'm talking about. Don't, you know, because he went into heaven with you. I mean, you can't lose your job. <laughs> okay. I thought I'd get a better response. Okay, but it's profession. So the, the word is actually should be translated in some Bibles accurately as confession. Right? Some of the newer Bibles. I think uh, the New King James. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. What have I taught you about the confession? Is it coming to the altar? No, it's not confession. That's all to call. Amen. What's confession? R write it down, y'all. Come on. Two words. Homo. Logio. Right? Speak that same thing. So since we have a high priest on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us, we, and that's why the Holy Spirit is so important. Because Jesus told us in John 16, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's not going to speak of himself. He's going to speak of what he knows. Right? And he's going to teach you the concerning those principles. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said over there. He basically said, and that's the administration of the Holy Spirit, is so that we can be on the same page with the high priest of our confession. So you, you can't do one stop shop and do the scriptures. How do you know once we have a proclivity or an inclination for something and we want it bad enough? Mm -hmm. How many know we do one stop shopping? Yeah. Oh, come on, y'all know I do. Yeah. Uh, you, no, I don't believe that. Oh, yeah, you do. We all do. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we get something, we have an idea, and we go to the scriptures and say, God, uh, uh, here you go. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Give me a sign. Give me a wonder. I just don't want no blunder. <laughs> Amen. I want, I want you to affirm this in my hands. Bless this thing. I want your blessing. But that's what the Holy Spirit is sending the earth to do, to bring us on the same page. So he can take our hand, take God's hand, and 
bring it together. Come on. So we can have the same confession. Because how can two walk together unless they agree? That's how you walk together with God. Huh? You see, and that's why you gotta fear lest the same promise that was given to them, we're not able to get because we have not relinquished uh, measures of authority uh, in our lives so we can be reconciled to God so that now, all of a sudden, as I'm submitting to the word and the spirit of God is moving in my life, yeah. it's bringing a unity yeah. in me. Yeah. How did you get all that out of there? Yeah. I meditated on this for about four years. So I can feel, see how I can get it to you. Yeah. So you can understand it. This is what it's talking about. That's what we got to hold. We have, and it's a, we know that Jesus, is, how many know that Jesus is making intercession? Yeah, and that's why it's so important. Tongues are so important because the tongues that we have is a component of the Spirit of Christ or the Spirit of God in us. And he, as we said, he bears our infirmity. So when we don't know what to say, he groans with utterance. Am I right? That's what he says over Romans 8, uh, 26, 27. It talks about how that the spirit of intercession is in us, right? And it's Jesus in us making intercession. I'm trying to get a little bit more out of y'all, but uh, as Jesus in up making intercession. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we labor with God. God, we we we, we give our God the room in our life, and then all of a sudden the Spirit of Christ is in us. Start making intercessions. 